Arborea is a new Blender add-on that combines a premium looking library of vegetation assets with a very interesting scattering system and procedural tools to create through the environments that you are probably looking for. The good news, it is designed by an environment artist, so you know this stuff is good. In a nutshell, it aims to streamline the workflow for creating forests, gardens, jungles, or anything nature-based directly inside the Blender. So without further ado, let's see what the add-on really offers. Let's start with the Asset Browser, which is a sleek, dual-mode system that allows you to quickly browse, preview, and import over 600 high-quality vegetation assets. It features smart categorization, a favorite system, and import settings for linked or local assets. And I think a standout feature is scattering directly from the browser, enabling you to populate scenes on the fly without setting up geometry nodes or particle systems manually. Overall, it is fast, intuitive, and really integrated into Blender's workflow. And the Anons panel is a centralized UI hub located in the end panel, as you might expect. First of all, it offers access to the key features, like asset spawning, seasonal switching, random transforms, and object conversion between linked and local, with clear and big sections, in addition to accessible buttons. As you might expect, this can help you a lot when building environments, because you're gonna go back and forth a lot. Also, hotkey integration allows for fast switching between asset variants and randomizing placements or cleaning up and use data, which is gonna help you have a continuous flow. One interesting thing I wanna go over is the Anon's material pop-up, which lets you tweak asset materials directly in the viewport without diving into the shader editor. You can adjust the hue, brightness, saturation, translucency, and even blend between seasonal presets. The good thing is that you have advanced options, which include leaf color variation, snow and moss overlays, and grass weathering. The system gives you detailed creative control, I mean over materials, in a non-destructive way and highly visual way, which is going to help you do, for example, look development. Another important thing is procedural tools like the giant vine generator, ivy generator, draw vines, and a snow generator, which are all powered by geometry nodes. These tools allow you to create climbing vines, surface hugging ivy, hand-drawn roots, and snow coverage with minimal effort. Also, they are going to help you with fast iteration, and they eliminate the need for external add-ons since you have different things all in one place. Now, the elephant in the room is the scattering system which is of course node-based. Generally, it feels intuitive and built for beginners and professionals alike. So, it allows you to assign an image as an emitter and scatter multiple assets with real-time feedback, which is great. You have features like group syncing, hotkey-driven scatter creation, and real-time adjustment, which makes scene building really efficient. It also supports layer vegetation ecosystems with full control over placement, density, an appearance across different surfaces. And here's the thing. With multi-emitter support, the add-on enables scattering across multiple surfaces simultaneously within a single system. This is great for modular terrains or large environments, and the system handles unified settings for all assigned emitters, while still allowing per object control through consistent vertex group naming. From what I can see, this can streamline scene setup, and ensures uniform scattering behavior across disconnected geometry. In addition to this, the distribution panel provides deep control over how instances are placed on emitters. You can just adjust density, apply viewport display limits for performance, randomize placement with seat controls, and use slope, altitude, and proximity filters for realism. Procedural pattern masking and weight painting allow for some artistic and data-driven control letting you paint in vegetation, define clearings, and simulate natural clump patterns effortlessly, which can save you a lot of time. I want to also talk about the scale panel, which lets you control instance size globally and per axis, in addition to adding random scale variation and using noise-based scale clustering, that is, for organic size diversity. From what I can see, these options ensure scattered elements look natural and non-repetitive. And when combined with distance-based scaling, you can simulate LOD effects and reduce visual clutter in distant areas and enhance realism and performance in large scenes. 
Generally speaking, most users will get comfortable after a few tests because the add-on also is well documented and it is designed to be user intuitive. The biggest challenge, I think, might be simply remembering to convert the local for material tweaks or setting up white masks properly, but those can become second nature once you have done it a couple of times. And the UI use of icons and grouping is logical. In addition, there's always a pie menu for those who prefer hotkey workflows. Generally speaking, I think this add-on can be a game changer for those who create environments in Blender, I mean natural environments, simply because it brings a lot of separate tasks under one roof, which means you can focus on art other than juggling different add-ons and bring them to the same place. Also, this add-on addresses common pain points, like quick variation, no repetitive patterns, easy seasonal changes, in addition to other stuff. So if you are interested, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to this channel to receive more news like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.